Hello everyone, I am Dr. Bert Caritas. We are here with the fifth video of the Blackboard series. We will talk about penis size and penis enlargement. I said it in the previous chalkboard series. In fact, I explained each topic one by one in the previous video. You can check out my YouTube channel and listen to it in more detail. We can say that this work is a bit like a summary. Now, before I start talking, the first thing I will say is that cream, oil, pill or penis, either I will take it orally or nothing you will apply to the penis will make the penis bigger. Therefore, let me say please do not deign to buy products such as enlarging your penis so much and making it so much that sold in the market. Because there is no such product that has been scientifically proven at all. That's what I wrote at the beginning. This is a very important situation. Now, when we talk about penis enlargement, or rather when we talk about penis size, there is always a subject that we skip, that is, sometimes I do this, my other doctor friends also see it, we skip the state of the vagina. Because the penis is not an organ that is used alone. Of course, it is very important to know the width and length of the vagina, which will enter the vagina and therefore complement it on the opposite side. Now there's the uterus, there's the cervix, there's the vagina. The vagina is a bit like such a straight pipe. It expands slightly to the back. The entrance part is two and a half centimeters wide, and in the back part it can reach up to five to six centimeters. Of course, this may be a little more in people who have given birth and have given birth normally, not by cesarean section. The situation with men is much clearer. Because a lot of work has been done on thousands of people. Because it's very easy to measure, I'll explain it a little later. But not so with women, of course. Why is it not so in women? Because of course, you have to do something invasive to measure the diameter of the vaginal depth. Some studies were done with MRI, gel was given inside, etc. But after all, of course, we know that it has a length of approximately 9.6 centimeters, although it is not as wide as men, and the vagina has a length of between 7.6 and 17 centimeters in research. Now let's not forget that. Let this stop here. Now, penis measurement in men is usually not done when it is hard. It has not been measured hard in any study in the world. Because the hardness can vary in degree. So sometimes there is excellent hardness, sometimes there is more medium hardness. This, in turn, affects the size. For this reason, measurements are made in the form of grabbing and pulling the penis, and this measurement keeps it 90% in a real erect state. For example, you pulled a person's penis, it came to 13.2 centimeters. This person came to 13.2. For example, when this person is erect, it is between 12.5 and 13.5 centimeters. It can be a little more with very good hardness. Where do we measure from? From the back. I mean, imagine the penis standing upright like this. The belly part is on this side. This is where the eggs are. Not here, but here we pull the penis against the bone. We put the ruler here. We put it against the bone. That's how we measure it. Which is how it has been measured in studies around the world. The average length in Turkey is 13.7. The diameter is 8.8 .8 centimeters. In the world it is 13.4 by 9.1 centimeters, more or less the same. In other words, we can say that the world average is around 13.5, the average of Turkey in the world is around 13.5. What do we call normal? If the penis is between 9 and 16 centimeters, we call it normal. Below 9 centimeters is called a micropenis. Micropenis is a disease, a problem. I'll tell you why this is the case a little later. There may be some hormonal problems here. Yes, there are definitely people who have micropenis genetically, but this must be distinguished. In other words, if a person says that my penis is around 8 to 9 centimeters, it is necessary to do serious research. Of course, as we can understand from here, 7.617916 is almost quite compatible with each other. That's what we call sexual compatibility. So, for example, if someone with a penis of 16 centimeters is with someone with a vaginal depth of 9 centimeters, there may not be sexual harmony here. 
because the penis will go here much more and put great pressure on the cervix, or because the entire penis will not be able to enter here, there may be pain in the woman and a lack of pleasure in the man. And I forgot to mention this. I explained this in my G-Spot video in women. We talked about the vagina, that is, if we think of it this way, we pushed our finger to find the G-spot and talked about the top, front, top part of the vagina divided by three fronts. It's because it's around here. In fact, this part is the part that enjoys the most, that is, one divided by three. So, for example, if a person's penis is 9 centimeters and the vagina is 13 centimeters, the first one divided by three is the part that gets the most pleasure. Therefore, we will not have a problem with 9 to 10 centimeters here, as 4 to 5 centimeters and 9 centimeters will fill here very well. But of course, the ideal situation, for example, is a man with a 13 centimeters penis and a woman with a vaginal depth of 13 centimeters. For example, this is an ideal. This is what we call physical sexual compatibility. Because I've mentioned it before. Intimacy, commitment and lust are important in marriage, and lust is through sexual harmony. Of course, there are many social and cultural reasons for sexual harmony. There is sexual information. There is communication. But one foot also goes through the penis-vagina harmony in this way. This is very important. If a person has a penis between 9 to 16 centimeters above 9 centimeters, he does not need penis enlargement medically. After that, if the person wants to enlarge it, every subject falls under aesthetics. So I'm going to talk about why he wants to grow it a little bit later. That is, it is done because it wants to. It is not done for medical reasons. Now penis size is a little bit related to hormones, of course. In other words, there are times when the testosterone hormone is released at certain times. For example, D.O. means before birth, and DS means after birth. Before birth, there is a peak of testosterone in the womb. For example, here the penis begins to grow in size gradually. More precisely, we can say that the penis begins to form. Masculinity is gaining characters. In the third month after birth, there is again a peak of testosterone, where the average penis size is around 3.9 centimeters. See, by the age of 11, it increases by about two times. In other words, it goes from 3 to 9 to 6 to 4 in almost 11 years, which peaks at the average age of 11 and tries to reach its peak towards the 20s. Now, between the ages of 11 and 20, of course, it should reach adult size. In other words, it should be 13 to 14 centimeters. There's a lot of question from young people about reaching this adult size, etc. They say that my penis is 13 years old, my penis is 10 centimeters. Look, it's past 6.4, and everyone's testosterone peak of puberty may be late. He may be 13 years old, not 11. It can start at 14. So it is with this size. Sometimes it goes to a certain height and increases tremendously in a year. This is also the case. Here's the point. Is your penis over 9 centimeters by the time you are 20 years old? That is the question. If the average is about 13 to 14, you are in the world average. If it is 11 centimeters, we are a little lower than the world average. This is quite important. Sometimes children also ask. My child is 10 years old. Here is what the penis size should be. We have a video about it. I had published a list. They can look at it from there. This is also important. Now that's the main question. Actually, why does a man want to enlarge his penis? Now, the first one is the obsession with size. So here, of course, psychologists give it a number of names. This obsession with size can be conscious, it can be subconscious, of course, if there is such a situation, then it should be examined by sex therapists or psychologists. What interests me is actually more sexual problems. Because this is so important that sometimes this is too much for a person and this has been seen in the studies. For example, a person has premature ejaculation and enters the vagina, ejaculates in the 30th second, wants to do the second and third, we talked about these before, but his wife cannot enjoy it very much. 
He is trying to make up for this lack of pleasure by enlarging his penis. In other words, he is right or wrong in his own way, but he is not medically appropriate. What do we do then? For example, I always ask those who want to enlarge their penis, do you have premature ejaculation? Do you have erectile dysfunction? How is your communication with your partner? How is your sex life? I question them. But if a person has premature ejaculation, for example, in research and in my experience, if you solve this premature ejaculation, then people say 90%. Look, this is a very serious figure. 90% of them say I don't want to enlarge their penis anymore. This is a very important thing. Therefore, the person thinks that he can make up for that sexual deficiency by enlarging the penis. In fact, maybe he knows that he can't turn it off by enlarging it. But there are men who think or feel like this and want to enlarge their penis. Then it is necessary to question them and treat them. If the subject is erection, it says hardening, and premature ejaculation says premature ejaculation. There are wannabes. So this wannabe is a bit much, during these periods. Why? You know, there are so many movies and so on. The perception is made as if the movies are in real life, as if those people are in real life, as if everyone else is. There are perfect vaginas, perfect penises and so on in the movies, but there are a lot of camera games being made. Therefore, there is such a wannabe. A little more, especially among young people. Now the partner request status is very important. I divide this into two. So, there are those who think that their partner wants a big penis. That is, to think. And then there are those who really want it. So his wife says that if he was a little bigger, she would enjoy it much more, it would be better. Why? Probably, in such a case, if the person's penis is 11 centimeters and the partner's vagina is 13 to 14 centimeters, he may want a little more. There are those who really want to, but there are so few of them that in my experience they are incredibly few. It is often assumed. Sometimes I say, here's why do you want penis enlargement? My wife is not very happy when she goes in and out of the vagina during intercourse. Why, you ask? No, I didn't ask. Why do you think that is? I think my penis is small. But did I ask? No. I mean, maybe it's because she did something wrong during intercourse. Maybe because she couldn't reach a vaginal orgasm or vaginal intercourse. If you remember, I said it in my previous videos. 70% of women want both vaginal and clitoral stimulation during intercourse. Only 10% of them can reach orgasm with vaginal stimulation. The other 20% just want clitoral stimulation anyway. In other words, there are so few women who only want vaginal stimulation. Maybe if they talk to their husband, if they communicate with their spouse, his wife will say, I do vaginal, but if you stimulate my clitoris or do those positions. Because he doesn't know technically. Because there are positions in which both the vaginal and clitoris are stimulated. I made a video about what type of ejaculation your partner wants, in which way he orgasms. There you have it. You can watch it. For example, if the lady comes out on top, this penis, this vagina, usually this type of women who orgasm with both vaginal and criterional stimulation do not go down and come out, but make a spring movement forward and backward. In other words, there was a small amount of penetration and exit of the vagina, but there was a feeling of fullness inside. And at the same time, they rub the crito on that part of the bone, the front part of the male. For example, it is very important to think about it. So I think so. My partner is sexually reluctant at work. Reason? I think it's because my penis is small. Did you ask? No, I didn't ask. This is very important. This is one of the most common situations I encounter. Well, he wants to enlarge the penis. So I'm not going to get into the micropenis thing. The micropenis thing is a very medical event. A detailed event. It needs to be examined very hormonally. Well, let's say the penis size of a person is 12 centimeters. He said, I insist I want to. Yes, he said that I would feel psychologically comfortable, or that my wife wanted it. There are no sexual problems either. How can we do it? There are two methods. There is a surgical and a non-surgical method. The result of both is the same. That is, about 1 to 3 centimeters in the sense of extension. For example, would 12 centimeters become 17 centimeters? Not. In other words, it does not happen in surgery. It does not happen in non-surgical method. There is a limit to this. 
Now, two things are done in the surgical method, separate for lengthening and separate for thickening. Here, look, there is the part of the penis that is visible in the front, this part, that is, the part we see when we look at it from the outside, and then there is the part of the penis at the back. Here, there is the pubic bone at the top, that is, the bone just below our navel, or it is connected to it. Here, when you cut this ligament, the penis comes forward and therefore an elongation occurs. This is called ligament cutting surgery. Also, there is no thickening in ligament cutting surgery. By injecting fat, the penis is thickened under the skin with that body part of the penis, let's say fat injection to that area. The biggest mistake here is that if you are going to have a surgical penis lengthening, these two should be done together. This is very important. Look, it doesn't happen alone. If it's just fat injection alone, some say so. Because I just want to thicken it. I don't want to prolong it. This is wrong. Unfortunately, there are doctor friends who do this, I see it. You shouldn't do it alone. Why? Because the penis, I mean, there's a stump like this, so you know, okay, maybe it's normal sizes, it's 14 centimeters, but when we put the fat this time, it's like a log, it's like a rectangular thing. For this reason, when fat injection is to be made, ligament cutting must be done, but only ligament cutting and fat injection may not be done, this may happen. Of course, this has some problems in itself. After the ligament cut, the penis stands down a little and in the case of erection, so now of course, there is not much effect on the erection mechanism. In other words, blood fills the penis and so on, not that mechanism. You just cut the ligament that holds the penis a little. That comes a little bit forward. Therefore, when the penis hardens, there are downward stops, it may happen in some people. Therefore, the ligament cutting procedure related to this procedure is a little more difficult in terms of complication than fat injection, but fat injection is really troublesome. Because now we have fat under the skin all over our body. There is no fat under the penis. Therefore, when you inject fat here, of course, your penis thickens, but especially those fats can sometimes come together in the future, which we call fibrosis, and cause such a lump. Of course, it's not the fat that does this, it's actually the body's reaction to that fat, which we call fibrosis medically. Therefore, there may be deformities in the penis. In other words, this side may be seen as normal and there may be palpable hardness and distortion at some point here. Therefore, it is necessary to pay close attention to this. The second method is the non-surgical method. Of course, this non-surgical method is not like surgical. We can think of the surgery as a bit of a fait accompli. In other words, the ligament is cut and fat injection is made. This can happen without any effort. In the non-surgical method, some effort is required. I like this method very much. We also get really good results in those with a penis length of 10 to 11 to 12 centimeters. Also, for the augmentation of the patient, this method has a long process, because it takes 6 months. We understand how much he really wants it. Now, the thing here is this, we said that it lasts for 6 months, shockwave and PRP are done 5 times a month. The shockwave here and the purpose of PRP, some people say that there is thickening with PRP. There is no thickening with PRP. We do not make PRP for thickening purposes. PRP is not something that is done under the skin, it is done inside the penis. The aim here is to increase blood supply by making shock waves and PRP. If the blood supply to the penis increases, if there are new capillaries, there will be stiffness. So the hardness would be very good. In other words, if it hardens 92%, when a person hardens 100%, there will automatically be thickening and growth. And therefore, shock wave and PRP treatment is a little bit for this, that is, to increase blood supply. This attention does not only make PRP and thicken the penis. When only the shock wave is made, there is no thickening of the penis. There are some scientific studies. 
they say that there is a thickening of 2 to 3 millimeters, but it is most likely due to the increase in hardness. This part is a situation that we do to increase the thickening and to increase the blood supply. Why? Because we will apply a penis extender or hand exercise, that is, a pulling action. We're going to grab this penis from here and pull it out. We will try to loosen the bond. There are a lot of muscles around the penis. We will try to stretch them. At this stage, there may be blood supply disorders in the penis. There are too many scientific examples of this. There are a lot of studies on this. There are patients who use extenders and experience erectile dysfunction. There are patients who use only vacuum and have erectile dysfunction. Yes, it is also used unconsciously, another matter. But in conclusion we usually recommend, we recommend 10 minutes of vacuum a day. Here we have a penis stretching device that starts in 1 hour and extends to 4 hours, and there are 5 minutes of both skin and stretching exercises in 1 day. Of course, this takes 6 months. At the end of 6 months, your goal is to achieve a length of 1 to 3 centimeters and a thickness of 1 to 3 centimeters. This is what I tell my patients. Let me give you an example. He came. We measured the length of the penis, 12.8 centimeters. Let's say its thickness is also 8.2 centimeters. I say that in both methods, if fat injection is done in terms of thickness, there is no limit there. So the more you do it, the more it will be, but I say 13.8 centimeters is a minimum of 9.2 centimeters. If you are willing to do it, take this treatment. Reason? Because one centimeter is exact, it almost happens in both, for sure, but after that, it varies from person to person. Sometimes we have patients who are 12 to 8, 14 to 8, we have patients who grow 3.8 centimeters, we have patients who grow taller. There are patients with whom we hardly attach 1 centimeter, but 1 centimeter happens all the time. I say over 1 centimeter, it will be a surprise for you if it happens. If this satisfies you, let's start treatment, we can do both. Whichever you want, let's start the treatment. But in young patients and especially in patients who have not yet been sexually active, I prefer the non-surgical method. Because he hasn't experienced much sexually. There may be an obsession with size here. I may not have figured it out. He may be a wannabe. At least there have been no side effects of this process when it has been done on earth without causing any harm to itself with this process. You know, it's done to you, and if it's done right, you will be the first person in the world. That's all I have to say about the penis in general. I didn't tell you that. Let me tell you about that. This penis has a connection to the testicle. Let me draw it this way. That's the penis. Now it's like the one I normally draw here. See, this is how the penis comes. The testicle makes the connection below. It goes like this. Sometimes this testicular connection can be like this. Sometimes it can be like this. And sometimes it can be like that. We call this the scrotal web. Let me write it here. Scrotal web. That is, in fact, the curtain of the penis. Of course, since this is the case, when it hardens, it will pull the skin of the facility towards itself, so it becomes a virtual thing. In other words, it looks like it is shorter, as if it were more stubby. We don't interfere much with this part of the penis. But when it passes to the middle and above, that is, if it is attached to the middle and above the penis, then we cut them from here and make them either this or that. So we're making it like this one. Therefore, the picture changes dramatically. Here's what I usually do. For example, the person wants to enlarge the penis, the person who has the scrotal web. I say, let's do this first. When I do this, some of the patients, that is, 50%, at least let me say so, in my experience, 50% do not want to enlarge the penis anymore. For example, he does not want this procedure. They say that my teacher looked very good. I mean, we didn't do any enlargement, but it looks pretty nice and bigger than before. He says I'm satisfied. That's why I do this first. After that, we do this or that if he wants. Let me explain this before I forget. And there's a nice thing about that, an example of it. We have a video on my YouTube channel. You can watch it. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you for listening to me.